In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the fifth episode of Attack on Titan Season 4, in which Willy Tiber declared war on Paradise Island, only to be immediately killed by the Attack Titan. In Eren's defense, he wasn't the one who started the war, so it was totally fair game. This video will explain everything that I thought was interesting about the episode, including how Willy already knew he was going to die, why the warriors were tricked into getting captured, and the truth about the Great Titan War. Before we get into it, I do these episode reviews every week, so I'd really appreciate if you hit the sub button, and as usual, let me know your thoughts on the episode down below. Okay, so episode 5 was called Declaration of War, and it begins with a brief flashback to Paradise Island during the time in which Reiner, Annie, and Bertolt were infiltrating the walls. They discuss the man who told them about his past, and the gang wonders why he told them his story. For those that maybe forgot, this man was the only survivor of a village that had been attacked by titans, and while he managed to escape, his three children were left behind. The guilt eventually became too much, with the man committing suicide, and Bertolt theorizes that he told them his story because he wanted someone to judge him. The reason this flashback was put in episode 5 was because this man's guilt at leaving his children behind is a direct parallel to the guilt that Reiner feels in the present day. If Reiner didn't make the warriors continue with their mission after Marcel died, then Bertolt might still be alive, Annie might not have been captured, and he wouldn't have been the only one to return home. Additionally, Reiner's guilt is even more than just this, as when he was on Paradise Island, he was personally responsible for the deaths of many Eldians, who he then realized were not the devils he thought they were, but rather they were just ordinary people who didn't deserve what he did to them. After the opening, we see Willy Tiber preparing for his stage production, where he will be declaring war on Paradise Island in front of journalists and diplomats from all around the world. Unlike his usual confident self, Willy is visibly shaken in this moment, and it's not because he's afraid of public speaking. In episode 4 of the final season, Commander Magath informed Willy that there was an infestation of rats in Mali, by which he meant that there were spies from Paradise Island currently in the country. Following on from that, there was an important conversation in the manga that was presumably taken out of this episode for pacing reasons, but Magath says it's highly likely that spies from Paradise will attack during the big speech. Magath believed that Willy would die because they don't know exactly how their enemy will attack, and therefore it's hard to protect him when he's just, you know, front and center on stage. Despite that, Willy accepted his fate and considers his death to be necessary to show the world the genuine threat of Paradise Island. His death will make the world feel sympathy for both Willy himself and the innocent Eldians in Liberia who would be killed. That's why in this moment Willy is so nervous because he knows he's not making it out of this performance alive. He's then approached by Miss Kiyomi, who was the lady in the last episode that saved Udo from getting punished. She's an ambassador from the nation of Hizuru, which is the only place that is tolerant of Eldians, and she tells Willy that she hopes the production goes well. After this, she leaves the area without sticking around for the performance, which is probably for the best. Moving on, Reiner comes face to face with Eren in this dimly lit cellar, and he can barely believe what he's seeing. Eren orders Reiner to sit down as if he was taking a hostage, and you can see that Falco is confused by their reactions. As I explained in my last review, Falco believes that these two guys are old friends, so Reiner's blank expression is not exactly what he was expecting. Eren explains that the cellar they're in is underneath a regular apartment building behind the stage, which is basically a thinly veiled way of saying he's about to kill everyone. I love Falco's innocence in this moment, like he truly has no idea what's going on, as if this man is not about to go full titan mode in a few minutes. Obviously Reiner is aware of the situation, so he complies with Eren's request to sit down, followed by an awkward silence in which Falco offers to leave. However, Eren tells Falco to stay and listen to his story, which was a mean thing to do considering that Eren knows he's about to blow this place up. Did those letters mean nothing to you? The crowd continues to get seated for the performance, and we get a brief interaction between Reiner's mother and Annie's father. In season 1, we saw in a flashback how Annie's father made her promise to return home from the mission, which is why she was crying as she was about to be captured. Her father believes that she must still be alive because of the promise she made to return home, although Reiner's mother is understandably not so sure. The leaders of Marley's military were also sitting by this point, and it was Willy Tiber's request that all the leaders were grouped together as close as possible. Because Willy knows the enemy is going to attack, he put the leaders in this section as bait so that they could be wiped out by the enemy and then Magath could rebuild the military from scratch. Just before the curtain rises, an Eldian soldier approaches the warriors of Mali and asks them to leave because Commander Magath has summoned them. We then go back to Eren, Falco and Reiner as the vice captain of the warriors finally musters up the courage to ask Eren what he came here to do. Eren replies in epic fashion by telling Reiner that he came to do the same thing that Reiner did himself, which is referring back to the attack on the walls all those years ago. 
Falco is still totally in the dark about what's going on, but Reiner begins to freak out as he realizes what's about to happen. Eren says he's doing this because he's the same as Reiner and he doesn't have any other choice. But what Eren doesn't know at this point is that Reiner did have the choice to stop the mission back in the day, but continued on because he wanted to be a hero. Meanwhile, the performance of Willy Tybe begins and along with the help of his cast and crew, he tells the story of how the Eldian Empire took over the world with the Titans after their ancestor Ymir gained the power. I did a video explaining how Ymir got her Titan powers if you're interested, but Willy goes on to explain how the Eldian Empire destroyed so many races and cultures along the road to world domination. Around 100 years ago, the Great Titan War began and this was a period of civil war within the Eldian Empire. At that time, the royal family possessed the founding titan and the eight other titans were separated among eight noble families. As Willy goes on to say, the story that most people are told is that there was a Marlian named Helos who was the hero that saved the world as he formed an alliance with the Tiber family and forced the king to retreat to Paradise Island. Whilst on the island, people thought that the king continued to reign and believed that if the island was threatened, the king would order the Colossus Titans in the walls to crush the world. As an audience, we know that this could not be further from the truth because when the series began, the king of Paradise Island was a fake and even the true royal family couldn't use the full extent of the founding titan. So in short, nobody was going to be destroying the world. While the performance continues, the soldier who approached the warriors tells Zeke to go to the front gate and he's Porco and Peak to a different location. It should be said that Peak is arguably the most observant and possibly the most intelligent of all the warriors, and you can tell that she's slightly suspicious of the soldier in question. In the manga, Willy told Magath that they need to be careful of traitors who have aligned with Paradise Island, and the military is no exception. We see this play out here as the soldier leads the two warriors into a secluded property before cutting the rope on a trapdoor and allowing the two to fall down into a shaft. In just one motion, this soldier has trapped two of the warriors, which will give Eren more freedom to attack later in the episode. Before we move on, there are two things to mention. Number one is that Peak hugged a member of the Panzer unit before she was trapped, and these guys are the ones who sit on top of the Cart Titan with their machine guns. The other thing is that by this point in the episode, we saw a couple times how Magath is observing everything that's happening on stage, but he hasn't yet realized that the warriors are not where they're supposed to be. Back in the cellar, Falco begins to think about why Reiner looks so frightened, and questions who exactly Mr. Kruger is. Because Eren claimed he was Reiner's old friend, Falco realizes that if they knew each other for so long, Eren might be from Paradise Island. On stage, Willy Tiber's performance takes an interesting turn as he begins to reveal the truth about the Great Titan War. Thanks to the memories of the Warhammer Titan, the Tibers know what really happened back in the day, and it is way different from the story that people are told. It turns out that the man who ended the Great Titan War was neither Helos nor was it the Tiber family. Instead, it was Karl Fritz, who was the 145th king of the Eldian Empire. Unlike previous Eldian kings, Karl was ashamed by their violent history and felt sympathy for the nation of Mali, which was one of the nations conquered by the first founding titan. He'd also grown tired of the civil war between the noble families, and so once he inherited the founding titan, he conspired with the Tibers to bring the empire to an end. It was revealed in the last episode that the Tibers had secretly been in control of Mali since the Great Titan War, and along with their safety, these were the things that they gained by working with the king. Kalfritz moved as many aliens as he could to the island of Paradis, while the nation of Mali acquired seven out of the nine Titans. Fritz then threatened the world to not attack the island or else he would unleash the massive Colossus Titans, but Willy reveals to everyone that that threat was a lie. Fritz said those things so that he could maintain peace on the island, However, if they were to be attacked, then he would accept it as revenge for Eldia's crimes. The king made a binding vow to renounce all war, which is why his successors such as Frieda Rice and Yuri Rice were unable to use the full power of the founding titan. They were always overtaken by Karl Fritz's ideology, and so even when titans were attacking their people, the vow renouncing war prevented them from doing anything. This meant that all the founding titans since Karl Fritz have been powerless against enemy invaders, with one notable exception. Eren Jaeger is not a person of royal blood, and therefore he is not restricted by Fritz's ideology. While it's true that Eren can't use the power of the founding titan at will, we saw in season 2 that when he makes contact with the titan of royal blood, he can control the founder's full abilities. Willy Tiber is aware that Eren possesses this titan, and declares to the world that everyone is in immediate danger because there is now a founding titan who is not held back by the vow renouncing war. Willy's emotional speech continues as Commander McGath is finally made aware that the warriors have disappeared. This is a clear sign that the enemies are about to attack, with Porco and Peak still being stuck underground. 
The reason they're not able to turn into titans is due to the cramped conditions, and even if they could transform, they just end up crushing each other in the process, so it wouldn't be worth it. In the cellar, Eren whips out his amputated leg and begins regeneration. Over the last couple weeks, I had a bunch of people asking me why Eren's leg hasn't healed yet, and the answer is that he was choosing not to do so, because as we saw in the past, titan shifters can delay their healing process if they want to. By this point, Falco totally realizes he's been tricked, and you gotta feel bad for him because he was genuinely encouraged by Mr. Kruger's words, and he thought the two had formed a real friendship. Eren reveals that the letters Falco sent for him were not for his family like he claimed, but instead they were for his friends. Reiner briefly ponders what that could mean before the scene switches over to Willy Tiber, who explains to the world that Eren has the potential to activate the rumbling. Willy's logic is that to eliminate the threat from Paradise Island, they need to stop Eren before he has a chance to activate the titans in the walls. Eren even admits to Falco and Reiner that it is a possibility that he could do this. He says that while he's the bad guy now, Reiner, Annie and Beltolt were the bad guys to him when they breached the walls all those years ago and caused his mother to be eaten. When questioned, Reiner claims they only breached the walls to retake the founding titan and save the world in the process. You can see that Eren almost takes pity on Reiner as he did earlier in the episode, and he says that Reiner must not have had a choice. Both of these men used to believe that the people across the ocean were the enemy, but after spending a lot of time in Mali, Eren came to realize that all Eldians are the same. There are both good and bad people on both sides of the ocean, and to Eren, Reiner was just an ignorant kid who didn't know what he was doing when he breached the walls. This is the moment when Reiner really loses it and reveals the truth to Eren after all these years, which is that the mission was going to be abandoned after Marcel's death and the only reason why everything happened was because Reiner convinced them to continue. Part of that reason was that Reiner wanted to survive, but as he admits here, he also wanted to be a hero that people respected. It wasn't his age or his environment that made him make that decision, so Reiner actually takes responsibility and asks Eren to kill him. Definitely not how Falco thought this reunion would go, but life comes at you fast. Meanwhile, Willy Tiber gets the crowd on his side by admitting that the danger facing the world is due to the Eldian race, and that if it was up to him, he would have chosen never to have been born. That said, because he was born, Willy now doesn't want to die, understandably, and he encourages all other nations that want to live to join hands with Marley and ensure a future together. Honestly, this was a great speech because he knows that people hate Eldians, so he's admitting their faults, but at the same time, unifying everyone against a common enemy. In the cellar, Eren asks a suicidal Reiner to stand up and says that he finally understands him. Like Reiner, Eren is also a person who keeps moving forward until his enemies are destroyed. And without hesitation, he activates his titan transformation just as Willy declares war on Paradise Island. I absolutely love the slow motion in this moment, and it was also a bit unlucky for those soldiers who were standing right outside the door. The attack titan manifests itself, completely destroying the cellar that Reiner and Falco were in, as well as the building full of civilians. Eren emerges in front of diplomats and journalists from all around the world, before crushing the stage and Willy Tiber with his bare hands. This moment is so iconic, so it was great to see it finally animated, and yeah, in my opinion, I think it was done incredibly well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and as usual, I'd appreciate if you dropped a like if you like this video, and share it with anyone who you think might enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, peace out.